welcome to the Photographer Diaries podcast. I'm your host, David Scott Bowles. In this podcast, we talk about anything and everything photography. Hey, ha, yeah, I'm getting better at that. And I took two weeks off now and I still am able to get that. So uh, yeah, welcome to the podcast, guys. I took two weeks off um, just trying to recover and actually just get ready for wedding season. Um, you know, we're about to be super booked here pretty soon. And, um, you know, the podcast has kind of just been on the back burner and I've been doing other things. I've been producing other people's podcasts and stuff like that. So it's been pretty crazy. Um, but I'm back with an episode. So, um, welcome back. And I hope that you missed me and I hope that you missed listening to my voice or watching me on YouTube. If if that's your cup of tea, um, today's podcast is all about, um, financial diversity with uh being a creative entrepreneur and uh originally i was going to have a guest on here and he wasn't available today but uh i will get him on here on probably the next one so my buddy vic vega is uh possibly going to be on the next one he's not really a photographer though he um is a i guess content creator you could say um and with that kind of title you kind of do a little bit of everything you do um photography video everything that deals with content creating. Um, So yeah, I I don't know if this sounds any different, if you guys can tell the difference, but I actually just upgraded my equipment um, for the podcast. So I did recently get the Rodecaster Pro 2, super excited. Um, Sounds really good to me. Um, I was using that Yeti mic before, and I love the Yeti mic for a couple of reasons though. So the Yeti mic is cool because you can use it honestly for two people. It has a very good low end, so with this mic, actually, this is the new SM7 something, not the SM7B, not the really expensive one, but the $200 one. Um, this mic is good, though it's a dynamic mic, so you don't need like 48, um, the Phantom Power or whatever. Uh, but it, does, it doesn't it does pick up the low end, so you have to go into the processing on the Rodecaster. You can get that like, you know, really, really nice uh, podcast voice sound, so... <laughs> Um, I did that though, and I actually kind of, you know, I programmed my audio into the Rodecaster already. So I hit the button, like you can't really see me off camera, but um, I'm hitting the button, doing the intro and all that stuff. So super stoked. This is the first podcast with it. Um, and if you don't, if you can see the back screen right here, I'm actually recording it directly into Final Cut. So I can actually take the video that I'm recording right now, plug it into Final Cut, sync it. And it syncs right away, and my editing time is super fast. I mean, I do these, like, almost same day. I'm going to probably post this tomorrow, um, even though I'm off schedule. But speaking about schedule, too, so if you've been following the podcast since the beginning, I've actually been posting everything on Tuesdays um, and – no, Mondays. (laughs) I've been posting everything on Mondays since the beginning of when I started the podcast – and now I'm switching to Tuesdays, and the reason is is because, like I said, I'm going to be super booked with weddings the next couple months. So um, getting into the studio on a Sunday, recording it, posting on a Monday is just not going to work for me. So posting it, recording on Monday and posting on Tuesday is going to be more of the deal in uh, just something that works for me. So let's jump into the episode. It's weird because I don't have uh, – typically I have like a track playing behind my, my uh, podcast, and um, – you know, you guys hear it, obviously, when the podcast plays, and but when I record the podcast, I typically have that track playing, and it's weird just listening to myself, um, but yeah, financial diversity, uh, being a content creator or a photographer, uh, a lot of photographers stick to one genre. Um, I'm a wedding photographer, but I'm a portrait photographer, so I do weddings and portraits. Um, I feel like they fall under kind of the same category. I mean, realistically, if we talk about a wedding photographer, what is a wedding photographer? I mean, they are everything. They are a detail photographer, which is a product photographer, a um, candid photographer, event photographer, food photographer sometimes. I mean, you really shoot um, a wide gamut um, as a wedding photographer. So expanding your um, photography when wedding season slows down, and that's kind of what I'm transitioning into so I actually have a my wedding season's been really crazy this year so I was like super booked like in the beginning of the the year and then it kind of died down a lot of those are kind of overflowed COVID weddings from last year 
and then it kind of died down and i had literally two months of almost no work um for weddings and it was scary to be honest with you because i do this full time i don't do anything else um for now but that's another topic uh yeah so i do this full time and um going into this you know crazy wedding season i guess that i'm gonna have i mean the end of wedding season there's two months at the end, November and December, where I have almost nothing. November, I have two weddings booked. December, I don't have anything. So that gets a little scary, um, you know, knowing that you don't have a source of income. Luckily, the crazy months coming up will will hopefully uh, roll over into that as far as finance, finances go. Um, but I'm diverse. I mean, I've been doing this for a while. I've been doing photography for a while. I've been doing um, video for a while. So I am able to pick up a lot of side gigs, and I think that is something that is so important um, in just the, the field of photography. So there's photographers that do weddings and then on the side might have like a boudoir um, thing, or a lot of wedding photographers do family photography um, to kind of keep their their money coming in, right? I can't do that. I just can't. Um, I've I've really tried doing wedding or not wedding. I've tried doing family photography, and it just is not for me. Um, I like just don't like being around other people's kids and and uh, families and stuff. I'm, and that's terrible to say as a wedding photographer, but uh, it's true. I mean, I'm on, I'm honest. Um, I I don't. It's more stressful for me to be to to do an hour session with a family that I don't know than it is to shoot a wedding um so what I do for my um kind of side hustle I guess as as an entrepreneur is I actually do create content for people so I work for a couple different companies I work for a dance studio and I film dance videos for them um I love doing that it's actually super fun um, though it doesn't pay shit, um, to be honest with you, <laughs> it's a lot of work and it pays almost nothing. Uh, but it's it's an extra it's extra money in my pocket that I don't have, regardless. Then I'm always fa- thankful for that. Um, so that usually covers a bill, covers a credit card, or covers you know whatever it it, it is. Uh, maybe puts a little bit of food on the table or gas in the gas tank. Um, and then I do I produce a podcast with a buddy of mine. Um, aside from my own podcast, and that's actually something that we do on the side, and we we try to promote um, for businesses. So, uh, if you're thinking about starting a podcast and you're looking into it, um, you know, contact me. I think all my information is somewhere on the internet. So, um, you can go to my website www.davidscottbowles.co, and you can get my email address and send me an email and say, hey, I really like the look of your podcast. I like the way it sounds, all that stuff, and we can get that done for you. We charge about $250 an episode, um, and we can actually batch content it too. So we can actually do, if you do two episodes in a day, we'll just charge you $250 for the day rate um, instead of $250 per episode. So that's something that you can think about. Um, Another thing that I do is I do portraits, and um, portraits fall under like this kind of like wide category. So a lot of people say they're a portrait photographer, but they shoot families. Um, I don't do families, but I do in-studio portraits for families. Um, I'm very picky on my clients when I pick for that because my style isn't for everybody. Um, I have a very dark, moody kind of fine art style in the studio, um, and that's not that look is not for everybody. Um, another thing I do is retain our clients for content creating. So I have a one, I have a client. Um, I'm going to do a little plug here, check them out because the more work I get from them and more stuff they sell helps me out. But so I work for a chef apron company called Cork District. That's C-O-R-K District. Um, They make chef aprons for, you know, fine dining chefs or, you know, home cooks or whatever it is. And I have a contract with them. It's monthly. I create uh, basically monthly content for them. So I I shoot. And and the, the good thing about that is you can almost do it in a day, right? Dedicate a day to yourself. Uh, luckily, I have a studio, so I, I just book a time at my studio, and um, I dedicate, uh, in, you know, maybe four or five hours of the day. I shoot their entire month's worth of content within that day. I deliver it to them. Excuse me. Um, I deliver it to them, and I have my content already done, and I did it in a day. But they have a month's worth of content to post. I mean, it's up to them how they want to use it, if they want to use all 30 pieces, post daily or whatever. But basically what my retainers 
cover is 30 photos, which is a photo a day, um, which is honestly what you should be posting. And, and for the most part, I over post a lot. I post more than what I should in a day. I'm slowed down. And then I do about two reels. We can also do like you could switch that up. I mean, maybe, you know, reels are huge right now. So maybe you're not doing reels, um, you know, for Instagram and you don't want to produce the reels. So we could do the thing about reels is it's a lot of work. So with reels, the the what you're going to pay is going to be higher because there's a lot more work. I mean, if I can batch content it, like basically if you can come to the studio and we could sit down and we could do batch content, have everything written out. Um, at, luckily at my studio, we have multiple sets so we can make it look like we filmed it in different different times. You know, we're not just one background all day. Um, that's usually the best thing that I can, I, I tell or offer my clients to say, hey guys, let's schedule a day, eight hours, maybe six hours, and we batch content. We come in, we do um, a podcast, or we do some talking head stuff, or we do whatever kind of marketing you do. Like for real estate, for instance, we can come in and do a bunch of talking head videos, um for real estate about the market or whatever it is um and then we can do some photos or we can do whatever else you know um so that's something that i do to diversify my income as a creative entrepreneur as well um so why is it important to do this i mean obviously you got bills to pay right um you know if you work a nine to five already and maybe you're you're content creating on the side and that's your side hustle there's no reason to diversify your income. Niche down, like niche down to whatever you do. So if you're um, a car photographer, for instance, um, you know, then just do that and work your nine to five, pay your bills. But if you're trying to go full time and you're trying to go in it with just one idea or one niche, um, it's going to be tough. <coughs> Excuse me. I need some water. I've only had Red Bull and coffee today. I haven't even eaten anything. Um, but yeah, so that is definitely something that you could do. I think it's important to have backup plans in place for anything. Um, you know, a backup plan for your photography business and, 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 and so on and so on. I mean, my backup plan is if my wedding business ever failed or, you know, business wasn't coming in as much as I would want it. Um, I would just go back to cooking. Uh, I was a chef for 13 years. I have a really good resume. I can walk into any restaurant, hand in my resume, and get hired on the spot. Um, even though I haven't done it in, I think it's been almost three, four years since I've professionally cooked, I know that I could pick a knife up and it's like riding a bicycle. Um, it might take me a little bit of time to like get used to like reading tickets or like working the line or whatever it is. And I'd probably go back. I'd probably start off slow. I'd probably take a job as like a prep cook or something like that or part-time line cook, um, work a station that's not crazy, uh, and then work my way back up so my skills are there. But, um, yeah, you got to have a backup plan, and you have to um, diversify that income. Don't just settle on one thing, uh, especially if you're a wedding photographer. There's, there's so many things that you can do when wedding season slows down, um, you know, and if shooting families uh is excuse me photograph photographing families um trying to eliminate the word shooting um out of my my photography vocabulary but uh yeah if that's something that you are interested in um then go ahead and do it uh you know do mini sessions all that stuff I, i'm not a mini session guy i i feel like as a male and this is going to sound really stupid, but as a male photographer, I feel like saying mini session to me just it's it doesn't fit my brand. It doesn't fit my target mar market. So um, I usually call them like limited editions or something like that. I, I change the narrative on it. But um, where are we at right now? We're 15 minutes. Um, good, good. I'm going to hit one of these guys right here. Hold on. I don't even know what this button does. <laughs> that, that was good. That was a good one. Um, that's a Rodecaster Pro built-in to do teach. I actually didn't know that that was going to do that. I had no idea what that button was going to do. Um, but that is it, guys. I'm going to keep this podcast short and to the point, simple, sweet, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Um, make sure you leave a review, write a comment, hit the like button. If you're watching on YouTube, um, tell a friend about the podcast. You can hear us on Spotify, Apple, and 
YouTube.